Good morning guys and this is Kuring with Gautam and guys today we will be doing unit 5 data lesson 1, 2 and 3. So let's dive in. Okay, so first in this lesson we'll explore what's going on with this graph in order to tell a data story which explains both what the data shows and why that might be. Following this we will learn about the concept of metadata and look for metadata on dates that's on the app lab. So let's dive into the pre-unit posts. So, what is data? Data is information about a certain topic. How do you use data in your life? Well, we'll look out the window. Is it sunny? Is it foggy? Is it cloudy? That's data right there. Look at yourself, your height, your weight. All of that is data about yourself. Okay. Metadata. Metadata is defined data about data. So it's data of current data. So let's open the data tab and look for the metadata on the data set. So let's look at the dog's data set. Okay, what does this table contain? It contains the name of the dog, the breed group, the what's bred for, minimum, maximum lifespan, minimum and maximum height, and the minimum, maximum weight. It's temperate, like it's how it looks, how it feels, and then it's image. So where does this data come from? This data looks like it comes from the dogapi.com and oh wait. And the owner of this data is code.org. So then what other useful information is found in the metadata? So we could click here so we can see that oh this is a string, string, string integer integer we can basically go on and understand that metadata is data about data so when we have this data table we can see that name is metadata as it tells the specific names for the each type of data then lesson number five we check for understand okay what does this visualization actually show google trends which is a tool that allows you to visualize data about search history for across all different kinds of locations below is a trend plot of cat and dogs choose the more accurate okay so People like dogs more than cats. No, that may be the case, but this data does not show that because it's only talking about Google keywords. So the answer is B. People search for dogs more frequently than the cats, but let's still look. There was a sharp increase in the dog population between 2014 and 2015. A, we don't know where 2014 here, 2014 is, but then even where there's a sharp increase, it declined back. But then the popular dogs is slightly increasing over time while the popular dog cats is relatively flat. It has been relatively flat. If we go from point A to point B, we can see it's an almost straight line with a little increase and this has actually decreased. But what does it best show? People, you can clearly see that they search for dogs more than cats. F finish lesson one, let's go on to lesson two. Okay, exploring one column data. So let's go to the data and let's use the dogs. Okay. So when we click visualize data here, we get to, uh, yes, visualize data. So let's see chart title. Let's ignore that. So the chart type, let's do you experiment with bar charts. If you are in, if you're in APCSP, I think you should know what bar charts and histograms are. So basically let's go for B group. We can basically, it basically shows you the numerical value by extending bars and then histograms which by generating bucket sizes, buckets like what data it holds, not ID, for maximum lifespan, we can see that two buckets and next then 68 buckets, if we increase the bucket size to like 10, or we can do one, one is more specific to like the maximum size, maximum lifespan, two, the graph gets more broader as we increase. So we can go with a bucket size of two for now. We can clearly see that the most lifespan is between 14 and 16. And then you can also filter it by name, by, no, no, not name. You can filter it. So let's check the breed group of hound. Let's see, in the breed group of hound, we can see that most of the lifespan is 12 to 16. But let's check the terrier breed group. We can see that it's 14 through 16. Let's check sporting, relatively larger lifespan. Let's check toy, 14 to 16. So we can basically filter through the values we want and see how specific data applies and how they compare. So that is how bar and histograms work. So if you're you, if you're looking at this lesson, you will be in APCSP and you would be in a, in a certain level of math 
to understand how it works. So why would someone make a histogram instead of a bar chart? So the difference between a histogram and a bar chart is histogram has these buckets. And these buckets basically determine how broad the graph is and how selective it is. So the large, so the larger the bucket size, the more data it groups. Like so, if it's so if the bucket size is smaller, like for example 0.5, it will differentiate between 12.5, 13, and 12. But as you increase the bucket size, 12 and 13, 10 and 15, 0, 20, it will just keep increasing the the column, the rows. So that's why they would use a histogram instead of a bar chart to alter the specificity. The bar chart just does it based on whatever numbers are there. So, okay. Let's go to lesson number three. Hi. Yeah, lesson number three. Filtering and cleaning data. Okay, so why in the first place would you filter and clean data? Let's check this out. So first, let's go to data. Let's do student info. Okay, so why would people clean this data? It looks fine. The problem is that we can see inconsistencies sometimes. So let's just keep going down and down and down. This is the cleaned version of the data. I think I've cleaned this data already. Yes, I have cleaned this data already. That's why. Okay, let's try and see if there's another data set or let's just start over. Okay, we've started over, we've cleared the data, the data, student info, let's go. So now we can see that there are large inconsistencies. So when analyzing the data, if you want to see how like things add up, so this is two. So two, it's still essentially the value two, but the computer will view this as a string and this as an integer, and it will screw up your data visualization as this will put this as a different column. So let's edit the column. Let's make sure the the rows are consistent so let's go here edit let's make this six let's make this one save and first let's clean this column so we clean data to make sure there's no inconsistencies and that there's no errors look see it's still a number but it is in its in it's in not in the integer form let's keep going down and most looks like everything's in integer form let's check this column too average hours of sleep looking good so far and yeah okay so in the string you might think that there's nothing for the strings but look we can see that lunch is a section and okay so you can see music here is capitalized right here right here music is capitalized but if you go a little down you can see music is not capitalized this will take it as another whole different category so let's edit this let's put the capital and then lunch then let's go here and Capitalize music. Then check science hist, not hist. It will be history. We have to make sure there's consistency in columns. So history here. Let's go down, change it to history. Save English, computer science, English, art, math, science, science, history, math, science, math. Art, science, science, music, science, English, English. Okay, so oh then we see another inconsistency here. Change that. We see that there's not much inconsistencies. Oh, CS, that does stand for computer science, but the data will not take, the computer will not take that to be. So that's computer science. And looks like we might, be, oh, English over here. Edit English. And then let's go up here, check for inconsistencies here. This is the only inconsistency we have. Let's change that to 16, change this to nine. And we can see here, there's another inconsistency. So while cleaning data may be a brutal process, you need to make sure that A, they're like in similar formats. So like integers are in, in a column with integers, there's no strings, there's no floats. And, we, and make sure that the strings are formatted correctly. Like there, you use one term, like for computer science, you don't use comp sci or CS, you use computer science and keep that and keep that as and keep that as the norm for all your rows so that's it we cleaned and filtered data. now filtering data so data let's use female legislatures and here we have so let's visualize the data so let's go for a bar chart and let's see how many 
ranking. What's the national rank? Okay, we can see that about Wolf 1 is 40, 50 is 37. Let's use a histogram so we can group this together. And let's check. Okay, this is very grouped together 0 to 5, 163, 178, 196. So you can see this is relatively same 50, not that much rank. So then let's filter by so this is the filtering tool i already showed you this but just basically you filter so for example in the ranks oh uh, wait let's see what states well let's see how many in texas okay so in texas uh the national rank we see most of them are 35 to 40. let's go and check uh georgia 30 to 35 the highest is 20. let's check uh kentucky 35 we'll see 45 to 50. so this is filtering data as we said you can clearly see you can you can filter the data to show rankings for each specific category that you need and then you can also screenshot this data and use it okay check for understanding what makes manually cleaning data challenging first if it's large amount of data it will be impossible two there can be many oversights because if you if you're trying to clean lots of data you might miss one row two there is lots of inconsistencies you you could overlook a spelling mistake even a small error still counts as a still screws up your data visualization by a lot that's why man, cleaning manual data is challenging because the because a the amount of data b the slush the small inconsistencies the small inconsistencies and in the end automating your data cleaning process is better currently many other softwares other than this do it faster and more efficient but to teach us how cleaning data works they made us do it manually i hope you had a good start to data this is coding with gotham thank you guys for watching and yeah peace out